Welcome to this edition of Diligence Inside Australia's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter and I'll be your host for today's show. Uh, we're here at the Governance Institute of Australia's National Conference and it's a uh, gathering of company secretaries and directors all are trying to get their arms around the issues that are happening both in governance and the boardroom. And today's topic we're going to be talking about are boards using company secretaries as a valued resource? And joining me is Megan Motto, who's the chief executive with the Governance Institute of Australia. Welcome, Megan. Thank you. Nice to be here. So I think a good place for us to start um, is for you to educate our audience a little bit on the GIA, so just so we have a good foundation. How about if you can share a little bit with our audience? Fantastic. Uh, so the Governance Institute of Australia is the professional institution for uh, governance professionals in Australia. Started life as the company secretaries, but it has evolved over time to include all governance and risk professionals as well, risk management being a fundamental part of, of the governance system. But these days our members are CFOs, CIOs, CTOs, uh, chief executives and directors, as you've mentioned before, anyone who's really involved in the governance of organisations right throughout Australia. And that runs the remit from the not-for-profit sector to the public sector to the private sector, of course. So right across the Australian economy, we represent closing in on about 8,000 individual governance professionals in Australia, but our reach is of course far broader than that. We really exist to raise the standards of governance and make sure that the governance professionals in Australia are operating at a healthy standard, so raising the professional standards and maintaining the benchmark for the profession, but also just to lift the bar on the whole conversation around governance in Australia and to look at the frameworks that we operate in in Australia. Yeah. So as a former CEO and uh, corporate board member, I found the session so far to be very interesting. So, Thank you. Uh, good job so far. So you recently completed some research uh, with Diligent on the future of uh, the um, governance professional. Um, it's a pretty good study, but can you just sort of summarize and share some of the highlights? Sure. And, and I'd also be curious if, if those highlights that you got back sort of changes your curriculum, because you guys do a lot of education. Indeed, indeed. So it uh, really was the first insight or look that we, want, that we did in a really structured way with, with Diligent, as you said, as a partner, to have a look at how things are changing and evolving over time, both because of the contextual trends that we see. We had a really good conversation today, for example, about shareholder, stakeholder, shareholder primacy versus stakeholder. Uh, issues. Um, so there's some context issues that are happening, increased political destabilisation, increased financial destabilisation, the disruption of technology in all sorts of markets. And so those are some of the contextual factors, but also the role internally in companies and the way that the company secretaries are, are approaching their roles and the way that boards are approaching their relationship with the company secretaries is evolving as boards are becoming more sophisticated. And uh, that's a great thing. So it was really the first look at what the governance professional might look like, what skills they might need in the future, what breadth they might need to encompass in the future to see where we might be directing both our education for our young professionals and our uh, mid-tier professionals, but also to think about the issues that the Governance Institute itself should be looking at in terms of how we uh, direct the conversation, the types of things that we need to be looking at uh, from a public policy perspective, how we need to be canvassing the conversation. In terms of some of the key themes, they won't surprise you. Technology and data as a disruptor in the boardroom was a really key theme. Uh, and a really interesting uh, a, a concept, and that is the more immediate the data that we have, the analytics that we have in the boardroom, it changes the whole considered way that boards make decisions. So we used to, in the old days, have hard copy papers. We would write those papers, they would come to the board. Sometimes the lag time between the board papers being written and the actual board meeting could be months. Uh, now it's weeks with the use of portals like Diligent. But increasingly, analytics, and in particular pr predictive analytics, will actually have us looking at the future beyond what's going in that board room. So the immediacy of information that boards are handling is critical and that number crunching that company secretaries in particular are being asked to do has exponentially risen. And that means a whole range of things for the company secretary. 
more trusted advisor, less minute taker. You know, less about compliance, more about looking at performance, more being an, a partner with the board to assist the board to lift performance of the organisation rather than someone who checks boxes and makes sure that the board's compliant with regulation. So one of the things that strikes me um, in my global travels around this is the speed of which information uh, happens. Like you could be on a plane, your company could have a crisis and it's viral on a two hour flight. By the time you land, you know, you're already behind the eight ball. You know, it's not like the old days where you could wait till the newspaper on the next day and be all prepared. Now it's literally you know, minutes that something goes in. So um, COSEX really are put into the situation of having to act or, or at least have a good plan uh, for what's going to happen in the next 30 minutes, you know, instead of 30 hours. That's right. And I think that that is, is absolutely true. And they're being asked to be, once again, more of a partner for the board of directors, both in terms of bringing real time information from the organisation into the boardroom and checking the accuracy of that information. So they're more of a curator of information for very busy directors, making sure they've got the right information at the right time to be able to make good decisions. But also thinking about that broader external context, thinking about reputational risk and what's happening in other markets. The Me Too movement has changed the way the boards will handle non-financial risks. Uh, the, the technology drive, as I said before, is really changing the way that boards think about how they look at scalability of business and different business methodologies. Uh, the, the whole uh, concept of um, the, the, the underlying mechanics of how to communicate with customers is changing. And company secretaries have to be adept at bringing all of that external information to boards as well, so that they're assisting boards both internally with communication flow, but also thinking about the broader issues. Yeah. Well, speaking of COSEX, I, I in my board days, I had a great value for a, a company secretary, or as we call them, corporate secretary, um, in the resources that they had available and how they could help me be a more effective director. And by that, I think I was, I wasn't thinking this way at the time, but I was sort of promoting the value of that corporate secretary on how they could help the whole board, which was sending a message at the time, sort of to management, whatever. Um, it's interesting as I travel around the globe, it's, it's very interesting the different sort of respect or uh, a value that is placed on a company secretary um, where in some companies you'll see them actually at the board meeting and participating and then you go visit another company and they're not even part of the management team, okay? And um, I, I often said that show me a successful company and I'll show you a company where the corporate secretary is very involved. It's helping the board members be more effective board members. And um, so knowing that, and again, my, I'm, I'm biased, but I had a good experience that way. But knowing that there's um, such a diversion of, of respect at companies, how, do, how does an organization like yours go about educating you know, directors and CEOs to the value of a corporate secretary? There's a lot, it's a great question. There's a lot to unpack there. The first thing that I'd say is that even in a single jurisdiction like Australia, there is a wide range of sophistication, if you like, of maturity of boards from those that see the company secretary as a value partner in the boardroom, right down to the companies who would have a junior minute taker or, or something of the like. Uh, and so there is still a lot of work to do even in, in a jurisdiction like Australia to lift the profile of the company secretary in terms of what they can bring to the board table, how, can, how they can perform in their role to the benefit of the organisation. Um, and another piece that you mentioned there and there is, is CEOs and the, the company secretary being on the management team. And I think if we think this, the company secretary is really going to add value to the board, then they have to be a respected individual by the board in their own right. 
So if you bring a junior to the table, they're not going to have the level of gravitas, nor necessarily personal and behavioural confidence to be able to interject, say, well, I think this, there's another piece of information that needs to be brought to bear here, or I'm not sure that that's the entire full picture. So I do think that the company secretary needs to be quite a senior person in terms of them having a valued and equal partnership around that board table, albeit very different from being one of the directors. And the third piece we, you mentioned there was the CEO. That means that CEOs have to have a maturity and a confidence in themselves to treat the company secretary like a valued partner. We all know that the company secretary is Switzerland traversing the terrain between the CEO and the board of directors, but great CEOs will see that as a really value added resource for them and, uh, and utilise that in a really synergistic way. I think that not all CEOs would necessarily see it that way and would see the company secretary potentially as a as a distraction for the board of directors or potentially even be threatened by it in terms of their own authority in an organisation. So it's a really sophisticated and mature relationship between those parties that makes for the best organisations. And, and we should emphasise, in addition to what you've mentioned, that the uh, company secretary has to do their part. That's right. They have to be very informed. They're going to get a chance to impress you know, that's these right. parties, and if that's wasted, then don't be surprised if you aren't invited back to the dance, okay. And, and keep in mind that that's not just about being great at your job in terms of the mechanics of your job. It's not just about knowing your stuff and being competent, but it's also about navigating relationships, navigating the wants and needs of different directors. Some directors might need more information to be comfortable making decisions, some prefer less. It's about managing the relationships and the dynamics in the boardroom itself as well. So it really does take someone with a, a, quite a bit of insight. Well, uh, Megan, thanks for taking time out of this busy conference schedule. This is the first time that it's actually been quiet around here, meaning that all the sessions are going on because <laughs> our other interviews have been uh, a little bit noisy, but that also shows you the action that's going on here. So thank you for taking the time and joining us. Thanks very much for having me. And that will conclude this edition of Inside Australia's Boardroom. So we hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again with another critical topic that will help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then.